Welcome to Tucson RV Solar. We are on site north of Phoenix getting to work on a Grand Design Solitude. So going through our standard problem solving, uh, you can see Todd's already busy putting together the additional 1200 watts of solar that's gonna go up on the roof. Uh, we already talked with the customer, we're gonna put everything up front. You see that solar control that's there, that's going away. That's handling their current, either 370 or 740 uh, watts that are up there. Uh, but they're gonna go into a different solar controller, standard Victron, so we can integrate everything. Nothing gonna go in the pass-through, but we've opened it up. Got lots of room for activities inside there, but um, well, we can kind of see where we're gonna be running the shore power in because the shore power is over on that side. No transfer switch on this because there's no generator prep. Uh, so two cables gonna come through, one for power into the inverter, and we'll run it right over the top uh, and then split those out uh, to be able to wire into both of our inverters because we're gonna do a dual inverter set up on this at 24 volts. And then we had to figure out where to put the touch screen. So standard touch 70, uh, I've got a pocket door in this wall, so staying away from that. But the current WIFCO inverter controls right here. So it's perfect, we're gonna take that out and be able to run, drop the HDMI and USB uh, right behind there. Nice, clean, simple install. And you can see what it looks like in the days ahead. Well, here we are up on the roof and doing placement. So Todd and I are talking through pros and cons of where we're going to put all these things. So we're stuck with those two panels. Unless we moved them, you know, we could, but do we need to? We're going to look at that first. So these are the stock ones. So 370 watts each or 330s. We're going to, I'm going to get in there and figure that out. Um, so we can do a series of three in the back. So 600 watts there. That's pretty... I think we're stuck with that for sure. And then what do we do with the other three up front? So we got another pre-wire here that we're gonna use. We really don't wanna modify this. Don't know what kind of antenna that is, so we're gonna leave that alone. It might, might not be able to cover it anyway. And then we kinda of wanna get back from the leading edge. I don't think the way the wind comes over the top would rip them off, but the only ones that we've seen come off have been really close to the cap. So Todd and I were talking, we think we're gonna move these two back as far as they'll go without covering that. And then this one, we're actually gonna move back here. And I've talked in previous videos about how I hate covering that up. But in this case, the pro of getting it away from this leading edge is even better. So we're just gonna put a couple of extensions on this uh, so you can still access it, be able to disconnect this series if you need to. So at least that's our going in plan. All right, here we are at the start of day two. Uh, Todd's getting everything out from in the front of the bay. Obviously, we got power off. Just pulled the old lead acid batteries out of the way. Uh, and then a whole lot of prep going on. So you can see these two guys over here. We got one for power in, one for uh, power out of the inverters. That's where we split the wires in between two inverters. Bring them back together. And you can see the wiring going on in there. The other end that doesn't have anything in it is where the single cable that will tie it into the both coming from shore power and going off into the power distribution box will be. Uh, right up in here we got the original shutoff. That's going away. That's actually where we're going to run our cables through. Uh, both our power in and out and our uh, HDMI and USB cable that go to the touchscreen. Solar is pretty much all complete up top. I'll take a look at that here in a bit. And then in here, you can see got the board laid out. Our two inverters, everything ready to go. We're actually going to pull those off before we hang it because we don't want to mess with trying to hang 200 pounds, excuse me, one time. Okay, you can see where the solar is going to come in. Work its way over to the two controllers. 
already got everything wired going into the servo. What you don't see is a shunt uh, because we're using the Epic 24 volt, 230 amp hour V2 battery. So they'll control their own charging and provide information back to the servo and touchscreen. Um, and then we got our Orion 70 amp 24 to 12. Plus we're gonna have a Alpha One Pro by Rich Solar. Uh, as backup for their jacks and slides. So plenty of power. We're going to get all this hung and go up to the next step. There we are at the end of day two. You can see uh, we got our two stock panels that came with it. Got them wired in series now. We got our series of three back here, 600 watts. Other series of three up front with 600 watts. Uh, soft start on that air conditioner and that air conditioner. Um, so definitely ready to go off grid, especially when you see what we did up front. All right, here we are on the last day. We've completed this install and now you get to see how it's all laid out. So we're gonna start with our two Epic 24 volt, 230 amp hour batteries. These are actually networked together. So you can see the data cable uh, we got our master controlling the charging and discharging of the slave, full communication uh, via its comm cable into the Servo GX. Uh, for the 12 volt side of the house, we have our additional Alpha Pro, Alpha One Pro 100 amp hour battery. That's for slides and jacks later on uh, because the Orion converter uh, handles everything up to 70 amps. Uh, all protected by our standard 400 amp fuse and battery cutoff switch going into the Lynx distributor. And then coming across to bring in the power from solar coming down from the roof, we got two arrays. We got 740 watts that came originally, and then we added another 1200 watts. And those are being controlled by both of those solar controllers. And then we got our dual inverter set up. Uh, we are in parallel with this 24 volt system. So she has the full 6,000 volt amps or 4,800-ish watts available to her when she's off grid. And then obviously double the charging power when she plugs in the shore power. <clears throat> uh, we were able to actually take the display for these batteries and mount it right in the middle. So if you open this up, you can actually see the battery status. And then on the shore power side, you can see our two inverters, from inverters, the breaker boxes on the left. Those are uh, where we split the two cables to the two inverters. Uh, and then brought them back together to run into the power distribution box. So overall, a nice, clean, tidy, compact installation and giving her plenty of power for off-grid later on. And then to put it all together, coming from the servo, you can see the touchscreen hidden away right in here. So external control by the batteries for the charging. Um, only using 200 watts from the grid right now because the batteries are full. Not getting any solar because it's super early in the morning, but battery's full and able to run everything. Super awesome installation. And love how it all came together. Another happy customer.